Greetings to the brethren. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Christ Jesus. And today I have some great news for you. Guys, the Lord showed me something really cool, which is going to help you out so much if you're going through demonic attacks. Now, almost everyone on earth is going to through these attacks to some degree in that the demons speak into your mind. A lot of your thoughts are not your own. They're demons talking to you. That's basically what the demons are fighting over in the second heaven, which is the arena of spiritual warfare where you have the angels of the Lord, and they're trying to speak to us, to influence us, to bring us messages. Like we see when Daniel prays, and then eventually Gabriel shows up, and he's like, yo, Daniel, I got delayed 21 days because the, the Prince of Persia demon thing was fighting me, but then Michael showed up and took him out, and now I'm here to answer your prayers. Your prayers have been heard. That's what's going on in the second heaven. The demons are trying to speak wicked ideas to us and make us miserable and get us caught in sorrow loops. And the angels of the Lord and the Holy Spirit are speaking good things to us. But this sermon is really good news if you're going under, if you're under demonic attack in terms of you're getting caught in mental sorrow loops. I mean depression. I mean regret. I mean anxiety. I mean fear. Any kind of a mental loop that the thoughts are making you sorrow, that's a demonic attack. Um, but check this out. I'm just going to read two verses from the scripture here. We're going to James chapter four, seven, and eight KJV style verse seven, submit yourselves. Therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. Nigh means near close, draw close to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And realize a lot of times when the Bible says hearts, it means what we would think of as the mind. You know, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, meaning let what, what I'm thinking of in my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. So check this out. Here's a key insight that I realized that if you're, let he who has ears to hear understand this, because this is such good news. Guys. The demons attack where God is about to bless. Let me repeat that. If the demons are attacking you, it's where God is about to bless you. They don't just attack randomly. Now, look, I don't fully understand how this works, but from looking at the scripture in my own life, it appears to me as if that when God is going to bless someone in a certain area, the demons can see that in the second heaven. They can see it. I don't know how, but they're aware of it. And what they will try to do is they will try to attack it because here's the key. The demons have no power on their own to stop the blessing of God. They can't. You see this in the book of Job, right? You better believe that Satan's been wishing his whole life he could destroy Job, but he can't, not without the Lord's permission. When the Lord blesses something, the demons have no power. Not Satan himself can lay a finger on Job until the Lord allows it. Now, in that case, the Lord does because it's part of this whole teaching example and so on. We won't go into that. But the thing I want you to rejoice over is if the demons are afflicting you with a certain fear, a certain doubt, you know, the Lord's opened a door for you. Demons are trying to get you to not go through it because they can't close the door. They don't have any power to stop God's blessing. But what do they have power? to try to influence our free will, because there's someone who can stop God's blessing. You know who it is? It's you. The demons are trying to influence your free will to get you to reject the blessing of God, because God's grace is resistible. It has to be accepted. You know, the line I often quote when Jesus says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who shed the blood of the prophets, how many times I would have gathered you and your children together like a mother hen gathers her chicks, but ye were not willing. When God blesses us, we have to accept it. We have to take it. He's not going to shove it down our throats. When God sends us the right partner to marry, we have to agree. We have to take the blessing. God won't force it upon us. The demons know that. They understand that. And so their strategy is they lie to you. They lie to you and they try to get you to reject the blessing because God opens the door. He doesn't shove you through. He opens the door and he says, no one can close this door. Behold, I have set before you a door and no man can close it for I have the key of David. He says this in the book of Revelation, right? So the good news is if the demons are afflicting you in a certain area, let's say it's financial insecurity. They're telling you you're going to be poor, right? That's a good sign. 
because it means that God's going to bless you in that area. That's why they're trying to get you to reject the blessing because they can't stop it themselves. But if they can trick you, right? And see this verse, line eight, purify your hearts, ye double-minded, like pick which side. You're going to listen to demons or the Holy Spirit. That's what it's talking about. Demons attack where God is about to bless. They have no power to overcome the blessing, but you do by rejecting it. So the demons lie and they try to convince you to reject the blessing. You see this all throughout the Bible, right? You see it with Adam and Eve. God basically says, you got this perfect garden, go dominate the earth. Everything's all great. Just one thing, don't eat from the, the tree, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And so Satan, he can't shove the fruit down Adam and Eve's throats, but he tricks them and he gets them to reject God's blessing and go against God. You see it also with, for example, Abraham, right? God tells Abraham, you're going to have a child. Abraham's like, yo, but Sarah, she's like in her 90s. How's it even going to be possible? You know, I'm an old man, right? So what do the demons try to do? They basically convince Abraham through Sarah, hey, just have a son with Hagar. That way it'll all be fulfilled, right? It's like as if they convince Abraham and Sarah that God's not going to come through. And so they get Abraham and Sarah to commit a sin in the eyes of the Lord, and that brings forth Ishmael, and that starts the whole conflict between the Jews and the Muslims way before Muhammad. But the good news is, if the demons are trying to do that, it's because they know God's blessing's coming. It's because they know that Sarah is going to be with child, and it will be Isaac, and it's going to work. So the demons use their ammunition to try to get you to reject God's blessing. And you see this all throughout the scripture. And I want to share some examples of my own life of how they'll try to do this with me. So if you've been following my channel, you know that about a month ago, the apartment that I was living in for seven years, suddenly my roommates tell me out of nowhere, you got two weeks, you're going to get evicted because we're redoing the whole apartment, blah, 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 right? So I asked God, I'm like, God, two weeks, that's not very long to find an apartment. Plus, I don't have any of the right paperwork. Usually it takes months. What's going to happen? And God says, fear not, I will get you an apartment by the end of the month. So the clock was ticking down and I was applying to hundreds of apartments. They're all rejecting me. So the demons start telling me like, you're going to be homeless, like get ready to be on the street, or maybe you're going to have to go try to live in a hotel or something because God's not going to come through. And I'm just having faith. God's telling me have faith. It's getting closer. Demons are like, get ready to be homeless. It's going to be terrible. Or maybe you're going to have to leave Spain or something. But I kept holding on to my faith. And then 48 hours before I got evicted, boom. The Lord came through and I got a new apartment and that's where I'm living now. And it's awesome. It's even better than my last apartment. It's going great. But it's interesting how they attacked me by trying to get me to essentially reject God's blessing and either accept that I was going to be homeless or go live in a hotel or leave Spain or something. They were trying to put all these ideas in my mind, getting me to doubt God. Why? Because they knew God was about to bless me. They knew he was going to come through and give me the apartment as he told me that he would. And now here I am sitting in the new apartment. But what's interesting is I've noticed this pattern with the demons. I'll give you another example. So uh, I live in Spain, but my parents live in America. And I go back every few years and visit them, right? The last time I went back was before I was saved. I had a girlfriend at the time. I went back with her and we had our summer trip and stuff. And so recently, since I got saved, God, God led me to leave that relationship and basically a way to godly wife, which, which I'm presently doing. And so anyway, so this summer, you know, I called my parents and I told them, yeah, I'm going to be coming back alone, you know, cause I broke up with my girlfriend. It's just going to be me and you guys, you know, and in the past, whenever I've gone back to my house in New Hampshire, I always get depressed. And in the past, I've ended up doing a lot of drugs. I think part of it's because the house has demons because my dad has all these books on theosophy, which is basically a intellectual form of Satanism. And anyway, and so recently, as I've been preparing to go back on this summer trip, now I have all these plans. I'm going to meet up with people from the inner sanctum. That's a WhatsApp group that God led me to create where it's just fellow born again believers. We share scriptures. We pray for one another. We praise the Lord. We talk about what we're going through. It's like a fellowship group that God has created so that you can be around other born again believers because a lot of churches these days, they've gotten all twisted. They don't even talk about the rapture. They tell you not to read the book of Revelation. A lot of them don't even believe in Jesus' second coming. Or they do weird, twisted things, like if you're part of the Catholic Church, they encourage necromancy, and Eastern Orthodox, you're supposed to worship idols and and pray to Mary, and that Mary's God, and all this 
twisted stuff. And so a lot of the churches, they've gotten all corrupted, which is normal. The word itself prophesies that this will happen unless there be a great falling away first, which we're seeing now. So a lot of people have told me, man, I have, I have a hard time finding a biblical church. I had a hard time myself. I went to some and something just seemed off with them. And people were just joking about hell like it wasn't even real and all kinds of weird stuff. And I got a bad vibe from the Holy Spirit. And I think that's partly why the Lord led us to create the inner sanctum so that we could have a place where other people who are Bible believing Christians can join together. You know, obviously if you have a local church, that's awesome. Pr praise the Lord. And perhaps one day he'll lead me to one and I'm super excited for when he does. But in the meantime, he's put me in touch with other Christians, uh, true born again believers in the Bible. And we pray for each other every day and it's going awesome. And it's the best friends I've ever had. But the reason I mention it all is because recently, as I started contemplating my summer trip, the demons started talking to me and they're telling me like, oh, it's going to be terrible. They're like, since you've been reborn and you broke up with your girlfriend, like you're going to be really lonely there. Oh, it's going to be miserable. Like, what are you going to do there? Sit all day with your parents? Like, they don't even believe. Like, and the demons started telling me it's going to be the worst summer. I'm going to get so depressed and maybe I'll get hooked on drugs and just like, it's going to be the most boring trip ever, you know, and maybe I should just stay in Madrid. Right. And and they're like threatening me, telling me, oh, you're going to be so lonely, like, like it, it probably won't even work out and it's just going to be terrible and you're probably going to argue with your parents all day because they don't believe in Jesus. But what I realized was, you know, I talked to God about it and God said, Evan, if you could see the things I have prepared for you, you would be rejoicing. You'd be jumping up and down like a man who's won the lottery. And that's when I realized, dude, this trip in the summer, it's going to be amazing. Cause I'm gonna, my parents haven't seen me since I got saved a year and a half ago. They're gonna see the fruits of the Spirit in me and it's gonna help bring them to Jesus. And I'm gonna get to meet up with other born again believers from the inner sanctum, people that have the Holy Spirit. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna praise God together. I might get to go to some cool churches. Who knows? Maybe I'll even meet my godly wife this summer. Who knows? I had a dream where, where I met a woman in America and it kind of seemed like that's what the dream was implying. So, the point is, dude, it's going to be the best trip ever. But the demons were trying to convince me that it's going to be like terrible. Like you might as well just stay in Spain. Oh, if, if you had been unsaved and went back with your girlfriend and stuff, it would have been great. But now you're going to be all lonely and da, da, da. And I realized the demons attack where God's going to bless. Dude, God's got the best trip for me set up this summer. I don't know what's going to happen, but I got pl plans to hang out with the brethren I got plans to meet other believers, maybe check out some of their local churches, uh, witness to my parents, let my parents see the fruit of the spirit in me. I know it's going to blow my parents away because in the past, whenever I'd come back to the U.S., I'd always get all depressed and stuff. And I think this time the, my parents are going to see the fruits of the spirit in me and they're going to be like, wow, what's changed in heaven? You know, and I'm going to tell them it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's become my friend and my Lord and my God, and he's guiding me. And I think it's going to have a powerful effect on him. And I realized it's just when you're going to get blessed that the demons will lie to you about it. Because think about this. Imagine, you know, and I'll, I'll share another example. Recently, I've been counseling one of our, our sisters in Christ that she was thinking of getting a divorce, you know, and the Lord told me like, don't worry, like I can restore her marriage. She just got to stick with it. But the demons have been telling her like, oh, it, it won't work. It's going to go terrible. You know, like it's not going to work at all. Like your, your husband's a jerk and it'll never, basically the demons are telling her the exact opposite of what the Lord told me to tell her, which was to have faith. Your marriage is going to be restored. Just make the right choice. Don't get divorced from your husband. You know, it's, it's all going to work out better. And the demons are telling her the opposite. They're like literally telling her, Oh, it's, it's going to be a nightmare and it's going to be worse than ever. And you might as well commit different sins and stuff. And I realized it's like they can see the blessing coming. They know they can't stop it. So they lie to you to try to get you to reject it because that's the only way it can be rejected. And, you know, another interesting way I noticed this, because look at how they lied to me. They told me, like, get ready to be homeless, get ready to just abandon Spain or live in a hotel. It's like they were trying to get me to reject the blessing. God told me, just wait, you'll have your apartment, wait, have faith. And I waited, I kept applying, and finally, 48 hours before I got evicted, boom, I found this place. It's got an air conditioner. You can see I got natural sunlight coming in. There's no paint peeling off the walls. It's an awesome apartment. And I just had to wait and have faith. 
But, you know, the demons, the stupid things, they revealed, they tipped their cards to me, which is whatever they're attacking you at, that's where God's going to bless you. So if you're having a lot of fear of, of economic insecurity, you're feeling like you might be about to go poor and the demons are telling you, oh, you're going to be poor. Oh, you're not going to make it. Guess what? God's probably about to bless you financially. Maybe you have some kind of a, a health problem or something. The demons are telling you, oh, it's just going to get worse. Oh, uh, you know, you better despair. That's probably because God's getting ready to heal you, right? Maybe you're feeling lonely and you're feeling like you don't have a partner, like as in a spouse or friends, a demon saying you're going to be alone forever. You might as well just start, you know, doing heroin or something because you'll be alone forever. It's probably because God's about to hook you up with good believer friends, because the demons, think of it this way, like I've come to understand these things a bit. Like, first of all, let me tell you this, they hate you. They are not your friend. They do not want to see anything good happen to you. Think about this scenario. Imagine that you decided you want to try out heroin, right? Maybe your friends are doing it. If so, get different friends. But let's just say theoretically, you're hanging out with your buddies. They're like, hey, try this heroin. What are the demons going to tell you? I know what they're going to tell you. They're going to say, go ahead and try it. They're going to say, you won't get addicted. You're just going to do it once. It'll be fun. Hey, you only live once, right? Might as well just try it. You, you, you can stop anytime you want. Go ahead. It's going to be great. See that? They're going to lie you towards destruction, right? If you pick some bad path, they're going to be like, oh, that's a great idea. They're going to be telling you, you can stop whenever you want. Oh, it's just a little heroin. Oh, you know, it's not a big deal. That's what they're going to be telling you, right? I saw a video recently about a guy who got saved when he was like 19 and he went into a church and he started getting all these feelings like, like, I don't belong here. These people are crazy. I, I just need to get out of here. And so he left. And then like a week or two later, they invited him back to some kind of youth meeting. And he just went because he thought, well, there's going to be free food. There's going to be girls there. I might as well go. So he went into the church again. And this time he started hearing these voices in his head, these thoughts that were like, you don't belong here. These people are freaks. You need to get out of here. And just then a pastor came up to him and was like, hey, welcome to our church. Let me put my hands on you and pray for you. And the, the guy was just like, okay. And he said, as soon as the pastor put his hands on him, he said he felt this anger in him. Like he almost wanted to like shove the pastor away. Like he hated it for some reason. But the pastor says some prayer or something like, Jesus, you know, show yourself to this man. As soon as the pastor says the prayer, all of a sudden the man had a vision of Jesus and like he gets blown away. The Holy Spirit comes upon him and then he'd been having all these negative thoughts. And Jesus says, you want to see your problem? Look at this. And Jesus points out and he sees a vision of these two little gnome like troll things and they're quivering because Jesus is there and they're like hiding from Jesus. They're terrified. And Jesus points out to the guy, those thoughts that were coming in your head are not your own. It's these things that have been talking to you and they've been trying to drive you away from the church. They're your problem. See those things? Those are your problem. And so the guy got saved and then he went through his own struggles and having to overcome the demons and stuff. But the point is, Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. How do you do that? Well, people, they pray a lot in Jesus' name, and that's great. They definitely do that. Definitely pray in Jesus' name. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. But if you really want to resist the devil, refuse to believe what the demons are saying. They're lying to you. When they were telling me I was going to be homeless, liars. Now they're telling me my trip to the USA is going to be so terrible, I might as well not even go. Ha ha, demons, you just revealed to me it's going to be the best trip ever because these stupid things lie. And I'm going to share uh, a final example of how I realized that they do this. So check this out. So recently, you know, I'm always talking to God, asking him about, you know, how I can improve and this or that and asking him for rebukes and stuff. And the other day when I was sorrowing and feeling sad about it, the Lord rebuked me and told me, don't be sad. I'm fixing your life. Everything's going to go great. The demons of regret were trying to get me and they were like, Maybe you shouldn't have broken up with your girlfriend. You know, if you had just stayed unsaved, you, you would have just, it would have been great or whatever. And meanwhile, God's been telling me that, you know, he's going to prepare the right woman for me and I'm going to meet her at just the right time. Demons are lying. They were trying to get me. So the Lord rebuked me and basically said, Evan, stop listening to those things. Stop crying because of what they're telling you. They're lying to you. So then we were going through other stuff in my life and the Lord's like, Evan, you're drinking too many beers. You really need to, you know, take care of your health a bit, you know? Like, you know, you should really wind the beers down, you know? 
So I was like, okay, Lord, you know, I've been pounding back my usual beers. So I was sitting in the park and I was talking to Lord and Lord's like, Evan, you really should take care of your health a little better. You know, I'm going to bring the right woman to you, but you know, take care of yourself. You don't want to get too much of a beer gut. You know, you're drinking a bit too much of beers, you know? So just to reiterate, I don't think alcohol is totally evil or whatever. Like the Bible warns a lot about drunkenness, but you know, it's not the Quran where all beer is totally evil. You know, I'm certainly not saying you should drink beer, but like, you just, I want to make it clear that like beer is not in and of itself totally evil. The Lord just told me you're going a little heavy on it. You need to slow down a little. You're getting middle age. You don't want to get a beer gut, Evan, you know, dial it back, be better for your health. So I'm like, okay, Lord. I was like, okay. So I start talking to the Lord and I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, how should I do it? You know, because I've had this habit now a few years since pandemic of drinking my nightly beers. And I was like, Lord, how should I do it? Should I just use willpower? Lord's like, no. And then I'm like, okay, uh, the Holy Spirit, should I, is he just going to do it? And Lord's like, no. And then I'm like, well, well, what is it then, Lord? Lord says, it's both. It's going to be your willpower and the Holy Spirit helping you. The two together are going to get the job done. And so I'm like, awesome, Lord, we're going to do it. So I started coming up with a plan. I was like, how about this, Lord? I was like, I'm going to keep track of how many beers I drink. I'm going to like write each one down and I'm going to see what the total is. And then week by week, I'm just going to scale it back. Right. And so I'm telling the Lord this plan and he's like giving me signs, like good plan. Evan. So I start, I started writing it down. You know, I was like, I come up with this plan. I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep track of, of how many beers it is each day. And then at the end of the week, I'm going to say, okay, let's reduce it by like 15%. Then the next week we're going to cut it down. Then the next week we're going to cut it down more, do it nice and gradual. Cause you know, smooth changes usually, you know, work better. At times it's the other way. Like when I started doing way too much Vivance, the Lord just told me to cold turkey it. But with the beer thing, I told the Lord, I got this plan. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to just step it down week by week. And then I said, Lord, if that works with the beer thing, then I can do the same thing with cigarettes, with energy drinks, other bad habits. And the Lord's telling me, good plan, Evan, your willpower plus my Holy Spirit. Lord's telling me like, like he's happy. He's giving me signs like good work, Evan. You're going to get yourself into shape bit by bit. Little steps count like good work, good plan, Evan. And he's assuring me like it's going to work. And I'm like, I know it's going to work, Lord. We're going to get me in shape and all kinds of stuff. And the Lord is being like, good job, Evan. Good job. That's the attitude. Check this out. So anyway, literally after I had that conversation with the Lord and I'm writing down my notebook, I'm like, okay, it's not just my willpower or the Holy Spirit. It's both working together. We're going to keep track of the beers. We're, we're going to start lowering it down 15% each week. Like the Lord says it's going to work. And then once we use this system with the beers, we're going to use it to get off smoking and other stuff. And the Lord's like, there you go, Evan. You're, you got it. Check this out. So literally after I finished having that conversation with the Lord, I walk back into my apartment and it's like lunchtime and I, I had just finished drinking a beer and I had my lunch. I was about to cook up in the microwave. I walk into my apartment and my landlady's sitting there and she's like, she sees me drinking a beer. She starts going off on me. She's like, what are you doing? What are you drunk? And like, I wasn't drunk. I was, it was like, you know, I had like a beer or two. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm just drinking, you know, a beer before my lunch. And she's like, I thought you were a man of God. What are you? Some kind of alcoholic? Like, like, and, and so I start telling her, I'm like, I'm like, well, I said, you know, it's, I'm working on it with the Lord and, and, you know, you know, beers aren't totally evil. It's just, you know, we're not supposed to be, be drunk. And so I start trying to say that. And she's like, oh, she's like, you don't even apply what it says in the Bible. Do you? She's like, you know, and she starts going off on me being like, I thought you said you were a minister. Like, you like, you don't even try to apply the words of the Bible. Do you? It's pathetic. And she's like, she really went off on me, like really hard about it. And I was, and it made me kind of sad. I went in my room. I started almost weeping a little bit, you know, but then I thought about it a little bit and I was like, it's kind of strange. Cause first of all, it was a little weird. She would attack me so fiercely. Cause it wasn't like I staggered into the apartment drunk. I literally just come in like, you know, with a half drink beer and like my spaghetti I'm about to microwave. It was a little weird that she would, you know, plus, you know, I'm like a 38 year old man, you know, like, like, especially in Spain, you know, to, to drink a beer with your lunch isn't exactly a extreme thing to do. You know what I mean? So like, it's a little weird. She would attack me so fiercely, but then I thought about it more and I'm like, also, isn't it weird that she attacked me about it? Just as I had come up with this plan with the Lord of how to lower my beer, beer intake and get into shape. And that's when I realized, you know, cause I was like, dude, that's it. 
like in the weeks before that, when I didn't have a plan to like get off beer, I mean, I always knew I was supposed to at some point and I'm working with the Lord, but isn't it interesting how the demons didn't attack me about drinking beer until I came up with a plan with the Lord, how I'm going to keep track of it and drink less beer. Then they attacked me for it. Then I had my landlady being like, you're an alcoholic. You don't even apply the Bible. You know, it's pathetic, like to a level that's like, doesn't even really make any sense, you know, like, and that's when I realized it's because the demons see it's going to work. As long as I was just drinking my beers, they leave me alone. But as soon as I come up with a plan with the Lord that I'm going to write it down and so on, now they attack. Now they're like, it'll never work. You're an alcoholic. You're a disgrace. You know, it's like they see that the Lord's going to bless me in that way. It's almost like they're like, uh oh, he has a plan of how to drink less beers and get healthier. We better attack him now because they're trying to strip away my faith. So it's not a coincidence that literally, like that had never happened with my landlady before. But the day that I like come up with a plan of how to drink less beer, now I get attacked by demons being like, you're an alcoholic. You don't even believe the Bible. Like all this stuff that, you know, looking back, I'm like, it's demons. It's demons striking at me through her. So what did I do? I prayed for her. I prayed, Lord, you know, help her, help her out. You know, obviously the demons are, are molesting her as they molest all of us. And I've stuck with the beer plan. It's working. I calculated that I drink about two liters of beer a day. So I'm like, okay, now we're going to cut it down. We're going to reduce it. Like, I think it was like I was drinking 2.2 liters of beer per day. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to cut it down to be below two liters of beer per day. Started doing that. Now we're below two liters. Now the next step, I'm going to be like, okay, now we're going to get below 1.7 liters. That's what we do. We just keep doing that. Give me two months and I'll be down to either zero beer or maybe the, maybe I'll drink a beer a day. I don't know. The point is, Lord said you're drinking a bit much, scale it back. So I'll just keep scaling it down until we reach a point where the Lord's like, okay, now you're set. And then we'll do the same thing with smoking. Then we'll do the same thing with uh, getting rid of energy drinks. Maybe we'll do the same thing with going to the gym. You know, the point is I said, Lord, you know, if this thing works with the beer, just gradually reduce it down. Lord said, your willpower plus my Holy Spirit will help. Like, I'm like, dude, Lord, I can use this system to like improve all these areas of my life. And the Lord was giving me signs like, hey, there you go, Evan. That's how you do it. Bit by bit, going in the right direction. Just after I come up with that, they attack me on the beer thing. And they try to convince me it won't work. And I'm an alcoholic. And by the way, you're not even a real Christian. And you're violating the Bible and, and all this stuff like that. Like, isn't it interesting? It's because they're afraid. They know that the Lord's going to bless me. They know he's going to help me. They know it's going to work. They know that with my willpower combined with the help of the Holy Spirit, that I will be able to get my beers down to a whatever the Lord feels appropriate, you know, maybe no beers at all. I told the Lord, I don't really care. It's up to you, Lord. If, if he doesn't want me to drink any beers, I won't drink any. Here. Maybe he'll say, you know, having one a day is fine or something. I don't know. I don't think the exact number matters that much. I think it's more about moving in the direction towards, you know, health. And, you know, obviously I got a lot of other problems. I got, you know, cigarettes and then there's, I also got to go to the dentist. You know, the, the point is there's a lot of things that I got to work on, you know, for my health and stuff. But that was a system I came up with with the Lord. But that's the point that I want to make is that, you know, I was speaking to a sister in Christ the other day and she told me a great line. She said, you know, when you're over the target, that's when you get the most interference. And so the demons, funny enough, are actually revealing to you where you're about to get blessed. They're lying to you about it. Whatever your greatest fear is, whatever the thing that's tormenting you right now, that's probably precisely the thing that God is going to fix. Just be patient. That's why they're attacking you there. <laughs> they don't waste their ammunition. They're trying to attack you to, re to get you to reject the blessing of the Lord. What was their goal when they had my landlady attack me about the beer? For me to just give up the system, for me to be like, oh, it's hopeless. Oh, I'm probably an alcoholic. I won't even do the plan. I'll just pound back over any beers. That's what they wanted to see me do. That's what they wanted to happen. You know, and of course it shook me up a little. I felt a little sad, but I went to the Lord and I reflected on it and I realized they're attacking you where God's going to bless. It's not a coincidence. They just when the Lord was going to give me a new apartment, they tried to tell me I'm going to go homeless. Just when I was going to go back the summer and, and have this great trip and probably help bring my parents to the Lord and meet a bunch of the brethren. They're, they're trying to convince me that I might as well just stay in Spain, that it's going to be the worst summer ever. Just when I come up with a plan with the Lord of how to like drink less beer and get my physical health together and do it gradually and have like a daily system with discipline, the demons tell me, oh, it'll never work. You're hopeless. Oh, and by the way, you're a bad person and stuff. It's like they're trying to get you to, to reject the blessing of the Lord. 
And so it's a huge clue because if they're tormenting you in a certain area, that's where you're going to get blessed. If they're, if you're feeling loneliness and you're just feeling like, oh, I'm just always going to be alone. And the demons are telling you that it's because the Lord's going to bring new people into your life. You know, maybe you've been single for a while and you're waiting for, for that husband or that wife. Now, if you're already married, stay in your marriage. Don't get divorced. I'm talking about someone who's truly single and the demons are telling you, oh, you'll never find anyone because you're unattractive or you're a weird Jesus freak, whatever. That's probably because the Lord's getting you prepared to meet your spouse. If you're struggling in your business, you know, and you, you don't know if you're going to be able to pay the rent and the demons are telling you you're going to go poor. That's probably because the Lord's getting ready to bless you financially. You know, maybe like you're having trouble finding a job and the demons are saying you're never going to find a job. Like that's probably because the Lord's preparing the perfect job for you. They're trying to get you to reject the blessing. But the mere fact that they're doing it reveals the presence of the blessing. Do you see what I'm saying? Notice that when I had no plan to reduce my beer intake, they didn't bother me with it. It's like they're happy. Go ahead, drink a million beers. They're fine with that. As soon as I come up with a plan and I work with the Lord to get off the beers, now they attack. Why? Because they don't want to see me do that. Plus, they know that when I do it and it works with the beers, I'll be like, sweet. That's what I told the Lord. I said, Lord, we'll do this plan where I step it down 15% each week and, you know, give me a month or two, I'll be off the beer. I said, Lord, then we'll do it with cigarettes. You know, give me a couple months with that. Then we'll do it with, uh, you know, not drinking so many uh, energy drinks in the morning. You know, I'm like, Lord, we can use this plan for everything. And the Lord is telling me like, good work, Evan. That's how we do it. You put in your part of the willpower and I'll give you my Holy Spirit. The Lord told me it's not one or the other. It's not going to be all your own willpower, nor is the Holy Spirit going to do it all for you. It's going to be more like you putting in your little part every day and the Holy Spirit, like the wind at your sails, helping you out. So that's the message I wanted to deliver today. Whatever your worst fears are, whatever particular way the demons are tormenting you, that is where your blessing is going to come from. And they're trying to get you to reject it because they can't stop it. The Lord is sovereign. When the Lord wants to send you the right partner, when he wants to give you the best job, whatever it is, like the demons, Satan himself has no power to block it, but you do. You can choose to eat the fruit. You can choose like, like Abraham did to impregnate Hagar because you don't trust the, you know, what the Lord's going to do. Like, and we do that a lot, but the best way to resist the devil is refuse to believe what they're saying. And not only that, but flip it around. If they're telling you that, that some upcoming thing's going to go terrible, guess what? They just supernaturally revealed to you that it's going to go awesome. Because if it wasn't, they wouldn't be wasting their ammo on you. The very fact that they're like trying so hard to convince you of something shows that, w that, that it's true. Do you see what I'm saying? Because they lie. They say the opposite of the truth. They're not just like adjacent to the truth. They're the inversion of it. So whatever they're threatening you with, whatever the sorrow loop is, flip it around 180 degrees. That's the reality. You see what I'm saying? Because they know the only way to stop it is if you reject it right? Like, let's say that you're like feeling like lonely, right? And, and you're like, man, I just can't make any friends, you know? And the demons start telling you, you're a freak. No one would ever be your friend. Remember those people in the past who were your friend and they, and they betrayed you? Like, you might as well just not even go out. Don't even bother trying to make friends. Like, you are just accept that you're going to be alone forever. That's probably because if you start going out right now, God's going to give you those friends. So they're trying to get you to reject it because they see it's coming. They can see it somehow in the second heaven in the spiritual warfare. They can probably see the, the activity of the angels of God getting ready to set up the blessing. They can't directly stop it, but they can try to trick you into rejecting it. Because imagine that you listen to them with the loneliness example and you're like, you know what? They're right. You know, I went out those other times and you know, I didn't meet anyone or I had that guy who I thought was my friend. He betrayed me. And now I've prayed to Jesus to send me friends and notice it'll come after your prayer. You pray to Jesus, Jesus, I feel lonely on the earth. Could you please give me some good believer friends? Right. And now the demons are going to come for you. Oh, don't even bother going out. Oh, that, that, that person you met who offered to bring you to a church, <laughs> they're probably a weird hypocrite. Don't, don't go hang out with them. Oh, that, that plan you had to, to maybe to join our group, the inner sanctum. Oh, it's probably all evil. Like the demons are trying to get you to do the thing that would stop the blessing. And if you listen to them, it will stop the blessing because God won't force the blessing onto you. Notice that he doesn't shove you through the door. He just opens the door. He says, behold, I have set before thee 
an open door and no man can close it for I have the key of David. What I open, no man close. And when I close the door, no man can open it, but you have to decide to walk through it. So the demons, they can't close the door, but they sit there telling you, you better not go through that door. It's going to be terrible on the other side. Oh man, better just stay where you are because they know it's the only way to stop it. They can't close the door. And if you choose to walk through it, you're going to get the blessing. God, no good thing will he withhold. God works all things for good to those who love him. Keep believing that and realize that the best way to reject the demons, definitely pray in Jesus' name, but then refuse to believe them. They're liars. But, but, but by lying in certain ways, they actually give away the fact that they know that God's going to bless you in a certain area. Like, isn't it funny? They tip their cards, meaning they're inadvertently revealing to you the truth if you choose to reject them. So if they're harassing you about a certain area, then just be like, oh, that means I'm about to get blessed in that area. Sweet. Once I realized that, dude, I was like, because they were sitting there trying to tell me that my trip this summer's going to be so terrible and that I might as well just stay in Spain and blah, blah. And I'm like, you stupid things just revealed to me that it's going to be the best trip ever, which of course I should know anyway, just by trusting God. And I'm going to go back and, you know, meet, meet up with people from the inner sanctum and, you know, and my parents are going to see the change in me. So, you know, you could realize it logically too, but the fact the demons are trying to come so hard being like, don't go on the trip. Don't go on the trip. It's going to be terrible. Whatever you do, don't go. It's like, ah, you stupid things just revealed that it's going to be a really fruitful, awesome trip. Oh man, I'm excited for it now because resist the devil and he will flee from you. And how do you resist him? Don't believe him. Believe this instead. Believe the promises of God. Believe all the things that he has said he will do for the faithful. And it's pretty much everything. You can walk through fire and not get burned. He's going to give you the perfect spouse. If you're in a relationship that's not going so well, he can restore it. Uh, if you got health problems, he can help you with them. If you got uh, addictions or, or even just bad habits, like we all do, he can help work with you and get you to change those habits. You know, uh, he can do all that stuff, but he needs your cooperation. And the best way that you can resist those wicked things is refuse to believe them. In fact, whatever they tell you, just flip it around and be like, ah, thanks demons. Ah, ha. ah, now I know that's going to go great. Ah, I was feeling lonely and I was afraid, you know, that I might not make any friends. But now since you're threatening me about it, I know I'm going to make a lot of friends. This is the perfect time to go out to make friends. See what I'm saying? Reverse the demon's threats 180 degrees and now you're going to perceive the truth because the demons don't tell you the truth. <laughs> when you're going to go down a bad path, like start doing heroin, they're going to tell you, oh, it's going to be great. Oh, you quit whenever you want. Oh, it's, you know, uh, uh, doctors, you know, use it for medical stuff. Oh, it's great. Like, you're about to go down a bad path. The demons are going to say, like, there's a great path for you to go down. You're going to go down a good path. You know what they're going to say? It's a terrible idea. You better not walk through that open door that God has. And so whatever particular area the demons are threatening you with, whatever misery loop they're targeting you with, that reveals the area that God is about to bless you in. That's why they're fighting so hard to get you to misuse your free will and get you to essentially give up. It's like a poker game where they're trying to bluff and be like, oh man, the hand you're holding, you're going to lose it all. You might as well just fold. It's like, nah, you got a good hand. You're going to win. That's why they're bluffing because they know that when the cards get thrown down, they're going to lose. But if they can bluff you and psych you out into just folding, now they won. So... Use the demons for information, whatever they're, I'm not, not, don't try to talk to them. Like don't seek them out. I'm not saying that. Don't seek them out. Ignore the stupid things, but believe me, they'll come for you. They'll, they'll talk to you. You don't have to go looking for them. Don't, don't try to talk to demons. I'm certainly not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is when they do come and they're harassing you and they're putting these thoughts in your head, just flip it around and be like, ah, so you're threatening me about this. That means that area, God's going to bless me. Ah, so you're, you're telling me that I'll never be able to get over this, this bad habit that I have. Ah, that means if I put a little effort into it, I will be able to get over it. See what I'm saying? Flip those stupid things around. You know, like when Satan's saying, Hey, eat, eat, eat from the tree. It's going to be great. Flip it around. Man, don't even touch that tree. Like, don't eat that thing. You know, like now we know to stay away from the tree. <laughs> so that's a way that we can actually use the demons to funny enough reveal what our future blessings are. 
wherever we're going to be blessed by God, the demons will come and they will try to get you to use your free will to reject the blessing because that's the only way it can be stopped. They have no power to stop it, right? What does Satan want? He wants Job to curse God and die because that's the only way that it can be stopped, right? Because if he doesn't and Job stays faithful, which he did, he, he did accuse God of some, uh, of, of some uh, injustice, which God had to repent for because he was wrong. But if he had followed Satan's advice and cursed God and died, then he wouldn't have later received the huge blessing of having all of his animals doubled and having even more daughters. And it was all beautiful and it was all great. And then Job went to heaven and got even more rewards. But Satan was trying to cut that off. So know today that whatever thoughts you have that are disturbing you, whatever particular areas they're in, that's where the Lord is getting ready to bless you. Have faith. The demons are liars. Tell the stupid things to go away. Say it out loud. Say, I don't believe you. What was that thought? That's ridiculous. I laugh at that thought. Keep yourself in good cheer. Keep in touch with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Say, Holy Spirit, the demons are bothering you, bothering me. Could you please put your truth on my heart? And then you'll start to hear positive thoughts like, dude, maybe my summer trip's going to go great. Hey, isn't it going to be such a blessing to get to meet like like uh, the other believers in the sanctum? And hey, wow, what a great witness it's going to be to my parents when they see the new improved Evan now with the Holy Spirit living within. Like Holy Spirit will start to tell you those things. But he, he speaks in a still quiet voice. And if you're listening to the demons and you're believing them and you're getting caught in a loop, then you're not resisting the devil and the devil's entangling you. The best way to resist the devil is to refuse to believe him and basically tell him, go away, devil. I don't believe you. And then pray and say, Lord Jesus, please speak to me with your Holy Spirit. And then you can pick up a Bible. You can talk to another believer, uh, have some fellowship. You can worship the Lord. You know, just the moments when you have the least strength, that's when you should worship the Lord most. Ask the Lord to guide you, to show you the truth. And above everything, believe what's written here. Believe the promises. Believe the Lord. No good thing will he withhold from you. He will work everything for good. The Lord wants to see you healthy, happy, fulfilled. He wants to give you love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, temperance. I think I got all, I think I got all. <laughs> and those are the fruits of the Spirit. That's what the Lord wants to see. And above all, he wants to see you in good cheer with the peace that surpasses understanding so that others will see that and then they're going to become curious and you can let them know this comes from Jesus Christ. This comes from the fact that I'm saved. And I didn't used to be, but now I am. And you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ would like to meet you too. And I can help introduce you to him and you can give him a Bible and pray for him. And so anyway, that, that's my sermon about how the demons inadvertently tip their hand and let you know where God's going to bless you by trying to get you to reject it because they know that's the only way to stop it. And when you refuse to listen to them and you're like, blessings coming on, I can't wait. God showed me he loves that attitude. It must drive the demons nuts, dude. But God loves that attitude. When we have the attitude like, oh man, he's going to bless me. I don't know when or how, but he's going to come through. It's going to go awesome. Oh, praise the Lord. I haven't even seen the blessing yet, but I know it's going to be great. The Lord showed me he loves that attitude. Why? Because we're trusting him. We're trusting our heavenly father and we're rejecting those demons and they're trying to get us to sorrow. So you know what? We rejoice. And just what they're threatening you with, be like, ah, so now I know I'm going to get blessed in that area. Thanks, demons. Ha ha ha. Stupid things. They're really annoying. They really hate us. They really hate us. Don't listen to them. Don't trust them. Whatever they're trying to tell you to do, it's not for your own good. Listen to the Holy Spirit instead. Cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit, by which I mean cultivate your ability to hear from him. As it says, if you draw close to God, he draws close to you. So fight to hear the Holy Spirit. Ask him to speak to you. Seek out his still quiet voice. Read the Bible. Search in your own thought for hearts that are, uh, search in your own heart for thoughts which are coming from the Holy Spirit. And you can tell because they're basically never negative. Like the demons are always putting these negative thoughts. Holy Spirit, he has good cheer. He's positive. He's optimistic. When he has you repent, it's not like this, you bad sinner, you repent. It's more like you're like, oh, I made a mistake. I, I did wrong. And the Holy Spirit's like, good job. Good job recognizing your mistake. Now work with me and we're going to fix it. It's like, uh, you know, like if a kid made a mistake, then came to his dad and was like, dad, I cheated on my test in school, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. The dad would be proud of the child. Not not because he cheated, but because he recognized his mistake. Like, good job, Johnny. You told me and you're not going to cheat again. And, and good, 
Good. Good for you to be honest about it. Like that's the Holy Spirit's attitude of repentance. Whenever the Holy Spirit's with us, it's never something bad. It's never something we dislike. You never get sick of him. He has great good humor. He has the character of Jesus because the Trinity, they're all one. They're three, but they're one. That's what it is. And they all have a great, wonderful character. So you want to resist the devil today? Then refuse to believe what he's telling you. And not just that, flip it around 180 degrees. Now you'll start seeing the truth. And now you'll start rejoicing and praising God and knowing all the great things he's going to do for you to fulfill his word. Because is God a man that he should lie? Nope. But you know what things do lie? Stupid demons. And they're all around us and they're really annoying. But all we really have to do to resist them is just refuse to believe them and just pray in Jesus' name to help and to help us hear the Holy Spirit more and to clarify our communication channel with the Holy Spirit which very easy to talk to God, just, just talk to him or even just think to him and he'll hear that. But you want to hear back from him, then you got to put in a little effort to seek out his still quiet voice. He speaks in a lot of ways. He always speaks in accordance with the Bible. He never says anything against the Bible, but that's really a separate video topic of how to hear more clearly from the Holy Spirit. You can do it. You got to work at it. It's like learning a foreign language. Uh, but I'm gonna, that's really a separate topic. So we're going to put that in a separate video. But with this video, I just want to emphasize again, whatever the demons are threatening you about, that's where God is preparing to bless you. So reject those demons and rejoice for the Lord is working all things for good for those of us who love him. We love you, Lord. Thanks so much, Lord. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for watching the video. If you'd like to join our inner sanctum group of fellow believers, I'm going to put my uh, phone number in the description, it's a WhatsApp uh, group. Also, if you just want to talk to me or, or ask for prayer or just chat on the phone or send me a question about your life or the scripture or something, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, if you'd like to donate to this ministry, I'll put the PayPal link in the description. And if also you'd like to email me a question or a comment or whatever, I'm going to put my email as well uh, in the description. So thank you everyone so much for, for listening to my video. I hope this has helped you in your war against those stupid demons. They're really much weaker than it seems. It's us that they, they try to use our power by getting us to make the wrong choices. And that's why we got to resist them because they're sniveling little things and they're going to end up in the lake of fire for all eternity. And don't feel sorry for them because they deserve it because they're evil creatures. They were with God. They made their choice. They got cast down to the earth. And now tick, 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 tick. Soon the moment will come when those things burn for all eternity, to which I say, praise the Lord. Those things deserve it. I have no sympathy for those demons. I have great sympathy for the people who are afflicted by them, but I have no sympathy for the demons themselves. Those things are evil. So let's reject them. Let's resist the devil. So he flees from us and let's draw close to God and God will draw close to us. And God loves that. That's why we exist. We were made to be in relationship with our creator. And that's why the deepest human urge is probably to not be alone. And the one who can fulfill that the most is our closeness with God. And he, you know, seek first his kingdom and his justice. And he's going to add everything else to you. Everything a man or woman could want. He's going to add it to your life. If you just keep seeking him and his justice and you put your heart on heavenly things, he's going to make sure your earthly life uh, goes all right. But Demons are going to keep trying to convince you that it's not true because that's what they do. They're like annoying, sniveling little worm creatures. So let's pray in Jesus' name that he may raise the amplitude of the Holy Spirit so that we can hear the Holy Spirit clearly and disbelieve those demons and laugh at them. And whatever they threaten uh, you with, take it as good news. Be like, oh, you're threatening me about this area? Oh, that means that area is probably about to get a lot better. Thanks to the blessing of God. Awesome. Thank you, demons. Now go away, you stupid things. So anyway, I hope that uh, helps. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Bless you, God the Father. Bless you, God the Son, Christ Jesus. And bless you, Holy Spirit. And I'll see you guys for the next video. In the meantime, keep on out there. Be in the salt of the earth, the light before men. Let the Holy Spirit shine in you so that we can help our comrades. Let us feed the fellow sheep uh, and let us... Let the Spirit shine through us so that we can draw others to the Lord Jesus Christ with our words, with our actions, with our attitude, primarily through bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives by rejecting the demons and instead believing every single word of this wonderful book. Mwah! Okay, with that said, I will see you guys again soon and have a most wonderful day over there. And thank you so much for all your support of my ministry, all your prayers. It's very much appreciated. Love you guys. Bless you, God the Father. 
Bless you, God, the Son, Christ Jesus, and bless you, Holy Spirit. And see you again soon, dear brethren. Till next time.